Hey party people, Techno back again with another lock video here, and this time around we have this Commando lock. This is part of their Total Guard series, and it uses their eye change technology. Now, Commando lock, uh, interestingly enough, we just recently did the video on the Brinks round body pad lock, and I discovered that those were manufactured by Hampton Products. In October of 2021, apparently Hampton Products acquired Commando lock as well. So Commando is, is now a subsidiary of Hampton Products. But anyway, that's more of just a sort of interesting aside. As far as this lock goes, as most commando locks are, or at least all the ones that I know, we have this layered steel body construction, this laminated steel body, with commando's signature sort of interlocking plates that increase the strength of the and the durability of that, that steel body. Because this is the total guard, we have this heavy steel shackle guard up here as well. And everything is dressed up in a, if I say so, rather handsome matte black finish. So this, of course, uh, is described as Commando Lock both because it has the uh, eye change technology and the Total Guard shackle here as a modular tactical lock system, which I think is apropos. Um, and it also fits very well with Commando Lock's sort of military themed aesthetic. Now, as far as the core on this goes, we have a five pin core with a master style keyway. This does have security pins. We have spool pins and serrated pins in there. And the eye change technology along with this shackle guard are going to pose some interesting obstacles when picking this lock as well. But as far as the operation goes, starts just like any other padlock. We rotate the key 90 degrees clockwise and we then open the shackle. But you'll notice here that the shackle guard is actually on the shackle, not attached to the lock body. And this is where that eye change uh, technology comes in or the eye change feature of the commando locks. So at this point, we can take the key and we can uh, rotate, the, or rather we rotate the shackle 180 degrees. And now we can turn the uh, key 90 degrees in the counterclockwise direction and remove the shackle. And the shackle guard comes with that. So now we would you know, have, be opening whatever it is that this is securing. Now, of course, you can reassemble this without the shackle guard on there. So we just put the shackle back in the proper shackle hole, move the key to the locked position. Oh, didn't quite get it there. There we go. Move the key to the locked position. We can close this back up. And now we just have a standard pan lock of the eye change variety. And Commando Lock does uh, supply different size shackles for these things. They have like a steel cable that um, locks in in lieu of the shackle. And you can see here that the appropriate, uh, let's say retaining a shackle hole for the shackle is marked in red so that you know which one you're working with. It's also at the bottom of the keyway for that matter. Now in terms of picking, this creates the scenario where to gain entry into whatever this lock is securing, at the very least we have to pick it twice and in a different direction each time. And if you were going for more of a surreptitious kind of entry, then you're going to have to pick it one more time back to the closed position, which is a rather sort of interesting um, scenario. So let's go ahead and take a look at what that looks like. So to pick this open, I will use my Sparrow's Tron pick in 25 thousandths. And I will also use the uh, top of the keyway tensioner in 50 thousandths from the Covert Companion tension set. So we'll just put that in the top of the keyway. Keyway is not very restrictive, of course. This is using that master style keyway, so there's not a whole lot to get in your way. And even though these... Um, locks do take advantage of security pins such as spools and serrated pins. They're not overly difficult to pick if you're familiar with dealing with those kind of pins. So right now we're on five. Got a click on five and a false set there. Uh, so in terms of even talking about something like the American lock, that was pin three and a deeper false set. Series 1100, for example, uh, I would say that these are quite a bit easier to pick than those. So the fact that you do have to pick this multiple times really does kind of help make up for, uh, you know, shortcomings, I guess you would call it in the core. It's not, it's not the most difficult lock to pick. Therefore, the fact that you have to pick it multiple times does actually help sort of make up for that. So we have counter rotation on pin four and now a very deep false set. Counter rotation on pin two. And we have an open. So now we have to pick it one more time, rotating the shackle 180 degrees out. 
So if you imagine this being actually installed somewhere, this does create an interesting scenario where you're not only picking in the opposite direction, but you're going to have to rotate the body of the lock relative to whatever it's attached to 180 degrees as well. So there are some, you know, interesting aspects to this. Pin five again. And we have a click on pin five, a little movement on the core. Pin four, counter rotation. Click on pin four, three, counter rotation. Deep false set. And two, counter rotation. And we must have just missed one there. Little click on four, I believe. Yeah, must have dropped pin four whenever I set two. So counter rotation on that four again. And now we have the full open there. So we can get into whatever it is that we are trying to access. And now here we go again with the idea of, okay, we've made an entry. If we wanted to leave without much of an indication that we did so, we would now have to pick this one more time to achieve a locked close. So we'll put that shackle back in, rotate the keyway clockwise to secure that shackle. And now we need to pick this once more in the clockwise direction. So pin five, set, pin four, counter rotation, little click there, pin three, all set, pin two, counter rotation. And we have an open, well, I guess we really have a close. But in any case, we are back to where we started with all of this. So that is the entire process there. Um, that's pretty much it for this lock. It is interesting. Like I said, the core is not overly challenging. If you've got some skill with uh, serrated and spool pins dealing with those, the core itself is not very challenging. It's not under spring tension either, and it operates rather smoothly. So just being able to push on those spool pins with the pick does get the core moving in the right direction. Um, so overall, kind of interesting. Um, definitely a, a tough lock from the physical side. I don't know if it's the most secure lock from the uh, actual picking side of things. But in any case, I do thank you very much for watching everybody. I do truly appreciate it. Until next time, take care and I will catch you later.